Welcome. So what I have here is y equals 3 cotangent of pi x divided by 2. And what I want to do is I want to show you how to graph uh, this function. So to do this, when graphing the cotangent, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find a couple of key important um, values. The first important value is going to be the period. And that's going to be the distance or you know, that's going to take for our function to repeat itself. So when finding the period of the cotangent function, what we're going to do is we're going to take pi and divide it by b. Now remember where b is going to be your coefficient of your um, variable with inside your, of your function. So therefore, I can see my coefficient is going to be pi, but pi is being divided by 2. So therefore, I'm going to have pi divided by pi halves. Now, to get my uh, fraction off my denominator, I need to multiply by the reciprocal. Therefore, my pi's are going to divide out, and that's just going to leave me with a period of 2. So that means a distance of 2 of my graph is now going to repeat. Now, once we know the period of a cotangent graph, we have critical points. We have x-intercepts, and we have asymptotes. So to find the critical points, all I'm going to do is take my period, which in this case is 2, and divide it by two critical points of an x-intercept and asymptotes. Therefore, my critical points are going to be a distance of 1 from each other. The next thing I want to do is I want to determine what the initial period is. All right? So the cotangent graph repeats itself on and on and on and on. But what we can do is if we can look at just exactly one initial period, where a graph starts and ends, we can use transformations to see how that's going to alter our graph. So to find the start and the end, our initial cotangent graph starts at 0, meaning it's going to have an asymptote at 0, and that's where the graph, we'd say, the initial period starts. So we take whatever's inside of our function, which we have here is pi x, divided by 2 equals 0. Now, the initial graph ends at pi. So I have pi x divided by 2 equals pi. So if you look at the parent graph, you can see what we call the initial period starts at 0 and ends at pi. Now, to change, to see what our function is going to, how it's going to, alter, all, um, how it's going to be altered by our transformations, we set it equal to 0 and pi, which is from our initial period, and then we solve for x. So we multiply by 2 on both sides. Then I have pi x equals 2, divide by pi. I'm sorry, that's going to be equal 0. And therefore, x equals 0. Over here, do the same thing. Multiply by 2 on both sides. Therefore, I have pi x equals 2 pi, divide by pi. And therefore, I have x equals 2. So therefore, now I can say my initial period of my graph is going to be between 0 and 2. So let's go and graph that. So I'll set a x axis and a y-axis. All right. So we say the initial, initial period is between 0 and 2. And when looking at the cotangent graph, your initial and your end are going to both be asymptotes, vertical lines that your graph is going to approach. All right. Now we look at our critical point. Remember, our critical point told us where our intercepts are and our asymptotes. So if the first critical point is at 1, then if we add 1 again, that's going to give us 2, which is our next critical point, which is our asymptote. Add 1 again, and then we're going to get 3, which will be, again, an intercept. And then add 1 again, which will give us 4, which is going to be our next vertical asymptote. We can also do this in the negative direction. Where we're kind of alternating between our um, zeros and asymptotes. Now, the path of the cotangent function, when graphing the cotangent, you know, we're going to have all these transformations, but you have to understand what the parent graph looks of the cotangent function. So the parent graph of the cotangent function rises left and falls right. Now, I'm just going to kind of sketch the graph. I'm not going to get too involved into um, how the exact curve is for cotangent, but you can kind of see it's going to follow this pattern, and it's going to continually repeat itself over and over and over again. But I'm just going to kind of graph uh, three periods here for this example. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you graph the cotangent graph. Thanks.